What's up everyone, Scott the Char Hammer here and welcome back to the channel. Yeah, just, uh, just, just look at it. Oregon and all of its late fall, early winter glory. The sky is gray, the water's brown, the ground is wet, and the fishing is really hit or miss. That doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means you gotta know where to go, when to go, what to use, and that's what I try to help you guys figure out. So we're back at one of my regular haunts here in town and we're after some stock trout maybe some brood trout i don't know they didn't show any brood trout in any of the stocking schedules like not on odfw or the army corps of engineers sometimes they stock places with brood trout but it's the time of year they're typically doing that so for those of you that don't know brood trout are large female brooder trout they're basically just like well i mean they're they're brood mothers they they harvest the eggs from the brood trout to create the latest generation of stock trout that gets stocked in local lakes and ponds and when those fish have been doing it for a while, they get a little long in the tooth, they get retired, i.e. released into the system for guys like you and I to catch them. Still good eating fish, depending on how early you can get them. If they've been in here for a little while, they, uh, they kind of turn into zombies. But it's middle of December. We're still like right in the early part of when they start stocking these things. So we're gonna get some line in the water, teach you guys some tips and tricks along the way, things to look for, strategies to adjust as we go. But if you guys haven't done so already, if you guys are new to the channel, hey, welcome aboard. While you're at it, why don't you hit that subscribe button down there and the notify bell next to it and click all notifications so you'll be the first to see all great content that's gonna come from this channel. Well, all right, Trout Hammer's gonna Trout Hammer. Yep, you saw me. There you go, guys. That's a fish. There you go, guys. That's unreal! Oh, this is such an awesome looking fish. Oh, yeah! All right, guys, check that out. So what are we walking into today? Like I said, it's the middle of December here in Oregon. So we are walking into yuck. Expect dirty water. Not just turbid water from the thermocline, but just like dirty water in general. It's like leaves, gunk on the surface, dead fish apparently, but also a lot of dead foliage in the water. So a lot of dead milfoil, hydrilla, stuff like that. Now, fortunately, the prime locations to fish were taken, so I'm fishing a real snaggy area. So I might need to do something just a little different. Yeah, let's just start with Old Faithful. We're gonna have to get doughy. And the reason for that is you can hide your hook in the dough. Yeah, we'll go about a foot and a half deep here. We'll take about an eighth of an ounce worth of split shot on four pound monofilament line to a size six treble hook. We're gonna put some power bait dough on here. So if you guys are new to the channel, something that I suggest when you use power bait dough for trout fishing is actually this. Find some live grass and grind that up between your hands. And you kinda gotta be forceful with, with it. You wanna get all the juices out to coat your hands to hide your hue and scent. Smells like a lawn. Now, yes, this stuff does have scents and attractants already in it, but trust me, anything to help hide that human scent is gonna help. These fish have been around people a lot. So we'll roll this into a ball and then press our hook into it and sort of mold it around the hook. That way you've got a weedless floating bait presentation for a situation like this. And no real special place to set this. That yeah, works just fine. They're kind of gonna be cruising along here back and forth. We'll set that up in a rod holder. And let that guy soak and do his thing. Um, did I seriously already just get a bite? Either I'm just seeing things. So now what that dough bait's doing in there is it's slowly releasing out scent and attractants for the fish. So the reason why I picked the spot here, one is because the creek flows in right there, right beside me. So one, high probability area for trout. They like that cold moving water, even in the winter, that colder moving water. But also that current is gonna carry that scent throughout the entire lake. Yeah, we're fishing for stock trout with the brood trout, but not like we normally do a stock trout where they're kind of patrolling in schools around the perimeter, around the shores. If you're fishing an area, you don't get any bites in about 20 minutes, you know, then move on, look for a different area. But a lot of times that 20 minutes is about as long as it takes for them to kind of go like completely around, even a spot like this here. No, uh, we're fishing for singular hunters. You wanna, it's a lot, in my experience, it's a lot easier to bring them to you. So we're gonna give this a little bit of a soak going out and then we're gonna start using some lures while we're here. Okay, we've given that a good 15 minute soak. Let's start throwing a lure around. Go with kind of a gold and red hammered pattern, Paul lure spoon. The reason that gold color is because we've got turbid water. It's gonna stand out a little bit better, even with the sun shining down. Plus it's got that siwash hook, so it's less snaggy. Yeah, 
can't see any oil just popping up and over that hydrilla with that siwash hook. And come out completely clean. These paw lures, the reason I like these, and I did a video about these a couple years ago, they kind of have more of a swimming action than a rolling action like normal spoons do. Just something a little different the fish aren't used to seeing. And yes, you can actually fish with two rods. I'm fishing with one rod that has a lure and one rod that has bait. You just gotta check your regulations for your state before you go out fishing. Here in Oregon, if you get the two rod endorsement, you can use two rods. But now we're employing what I call the trout hammer method of trout fishing, where you're fishing with two different rods, two different systems, two different presentations at the same time, trying to find what the fish are keyed into as quickly as possible, and then that's when you go in and hammer them. So we got two different presentations. We got stationary bait scent method, meant to trigger a hunger and feeding response. We've got the moving primary action lure, meant to trigger a predatory response. Yes, trout are predators and they love to chase. And also different colors and presentations. Like I said, we've got we've got chartreuse with scent. We've got gold and red here with a little bit of flash going off here in the water. Stationary, moving, you know, give the fish some options. Figure out what they're keyed into and then just lean into that. Fortunately, you can't just fish with two lures at the same time if they want lures. But you can fish with two bait at the same time. And if this doesn't work for about 10 minutes or so, that's when we switch things up. We switch up our lure, switch up our bait. And this is the method I've developed over the years that's helped me be pretty successful fishing for trout. Okay, time to switch things up. You know, the bait was still pretty good, so I decided just to redeploy. Just kind of shift it over about 15 or 20 feet. And chartreuse is kind of the cheat button for trout if that doesn't work. But stranger things have happened. I have had times where I could literally only catch them on corn. You know, we'll stick with a gold-plated spoon because of the dirty water, but we'll switch to a red and white color presentation. So interesting thing about the color white for lures, if you're new to trout fishing, well, if you're new to fishing, you know, in general, or if you didn't know this, the fish actually don't see the color white, but that white reflects UV light. So to them, it kind of looks like a disco ball, but we're sticking with the siwash hook because of the weeds. Kind of giving away the secret to fishing in hydrilla is that siwash hook. Come right through there, snag free every time. Olympic dive, as little splash as possible. Scott dive, as much splash as possible. So for my lure rod, I'm fishing a five foot ultralight with two pound test lines, pretty much the only way you're gonna be able to cast lures this small. You can use four pound test line for this presentation. You know, it, it you know, help you cast just fine, but only I'd say only use two pound line if you're already used to it. Now, I know I've seen brood trout activity since I've been here. I know they're here. They like to roll on the surface a lot. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. I got something good for you. Come on over here. Well, have a little light, have something to nosh. Oh, oh, do we got doinkage? I think that is wind doink. Damn wind giving me the doink. I want real doink. You guys are lost. You guys are about 50 miles too far east. I already get enough from the cormorants over here. I don't need seagulls. Well, hello. <laughs> yeah, we got one rolling around right here in front of me. There you are. I 
I'm just gonna prepare. <laughs> Yeah. Try hammer. Oh, you're that guy. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other guy was just down here. Uh, AJ. Oh, AJ was down here. Oh, cool. I caught one down there though. On this spinner right here. Little, tr Little trout. I just got a suspicion here now that she go with two bait. And based on the little activity I've seen, I got a little suspicion we should go with double bait setup. Go that way. One of two ways. <laughs> I'll just get ready. Prepare for some imminent doinkage. I think it's time for a color switch. Got the chartreuse out there long enough. Do enough. Let's go with some nymph color. And I guess flavor. I mean, I've, I've never tried this stuff before. Is that fish doink or is that current doink? It's no breeze whatsoever. Yeah, a little bit of doinking going on there. Seeing them just haven't had any yet. What I've seen roll in front of me a couple times is pretty big. I mean, had to have been about eight pounds. Oh, there it is. <laughs> or there she is again. Come on, I got bait right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's showy. Is it the hen and the buck? No, those are just hens. Oh, really? So right here? Yeah, it's the, it's the brood trout. So they're the retired brooders from the hatchery. Oh, my goodness. All amped up. Yeah, she's energetic, just uh, apparently not hungry <laughs> the bait is right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> right on cue I know it's dragging my line <laughs> That's the wrong kind of doink. Oh, those are bites. They bit it? Yep. Yeah, they just talked yesterday. Be careful, I got line out there. There, there's an entire lake, and you guys are fishing right over where I have line. Oh, no, we're just trying to, catch, trying to catch fish, you know? So am I. Yeah. And I've already got line here. We can share the area. Karen, Karen, do you not like sharing? <laughs> area? Or as Sophia would say, ta-da! Yes, we fished into the night again which this time of year comes way too soon. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the content creation process, uh, batteries don't like cold weather. What? 
What? What? Oh, are you starving with a bowl half full of food? So no catches this time around, but that's kind of the way brooder fishing goes. Think of it as steelhead fishing for ponds. You're fishing for something very specific and you don't get very many shots at them. The way you get it done is you just keep doing it. You just keep going out to do it. Shut up. What do you have to say for yourself? That's what I thought. A little bummed out, someone I ran into at the pond said AJ Fishing was there earlier and I would have loved to have said hi. Like two ships passing in the night. And like I said, no catch in this video, but I think I got enough content here that I think was pretty educational, could help you guys out. And that's what that's the main purpose of what I'm trying to do with this channel, is trying to teach you guys, trying to give you guys skills, knowledge, tips, tricks along the way. Doesn't mean you're always going to catch fish. It's called fishing, not catching. And also it shows the reality of fishing. So to everyone that's going to get in the comment section say, oh, you suck, you didn't catch fish. I want to see you make a channel and you catch fish every single time you go fishing. I dare you. But no, in reality, I want to know what you guys thought down in the comments below. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there and the notify bell next to and click all notifications so you guys will be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from this channel. Give this video a like for me and check out my channel page if you guys haven't done so already. I've got everything laid out for you guys with the educational videos, fishing videos for panfish, bass, surf fishing, all the best that I can offer for fishing here. Other than that, I'm going to say thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, tips up, tight lines, and have fun fishing.